morning friends so this is my last lecture on the topic solutions and today we are going to cover the examples numericals on each concept uh, already uh, we completed the examples on henry's law so today we are going to see the each uh, concept one or two examples on each concept so this is the first examples from your uh, textbook that is exercise the vapor pressure of water at 20 degrees celsius is 17 millimeter of mercury what is the vapor pressure of solution containing 2.8 gram of urea in 50 grams of water isn't it so whenever examples numericals they asks isn't it so first you have to write the given data from that examples that is a given whatever if your theor theoretically part you studied about the concept then given data you have to write accurately first because if you write given point out given data then it is easy to uh, solve that examples isn't it so first uh, read the problems sentence by sentence and write the given data the vapor pressure of water at 20 degrees celsius is 17 millimeter of mercury Hence, this 17 millimeter of mercury is the vapor pressure, is the vapor pressure and of water in the sense water. So, vapor pressure we studied two types. That is the solution of vapor pressure, hai, solvents of vapor pressure hai, and Dogancha vapor pressure and symbols jayate vague vague rate. Ah, isn't it? Mahya vapor pressure kuna sa. That is water is mentioned here. So, as water is mentioned here, it is solvent. It is solvent and solvent vapor pressure of solvent is represented by symbol p naught or p1 naught isn't it so given data first p1 naught it is given 17 millimeter of mercury isn't it p1 naught 17 mm of hg temperature is also given if you uh, mention your temperature no problem if you not mention the temperature no problem because during solving this uh, examples temperature data is not necessary if you want to write t not problem 25 degree celsius isn't it okay then next sentence what is the vapor pressure of solution what is the vapor pressure of solution yes we covered here vapor pressure of solvent so vapor pressure of solution question mark isn't it so p question mark p question mark vapor pressure of solution containing 2.8 gram of urea 2.8 gram of urea in 50 grams of water in 50 grams of water in the sense urea is solute urea is solute and water is solvent water is solvent so weight of urea is in solute is 2.8 gram and solutes always represented by symbol by writing subscript 2 and solvent is represented by writing subscript 1 yeah, onwards remember well so 2.8 gram it is the weight of solute so symbol is w2 isn't it w2 2.8 gram isn't it in 50 grams of water in 50 grams of water so water is the solvent so weight of solvent so symbol is w1 weight of solvent it is w1 50 gram isn't it 50 gram so these are the data given from that problem we write one by one isn't it okay and they ask to calculate that is a vapor pressure of solution p vapor pressure so first if you when you write the given data from that uh, problem or numericals first you have to concentrate that the given problem is based on which concept given problem is based on which concept so just by observing two or three words one can understood that the problem is based on yes vapor pressure lowering concept vapor pressure lowering concept and as it is based on vapor pressure lowering concept so you have to click you have to click the uh, formulas in you have studied in the vapor pressure lowering and that contains the terms p1 naught p weight weight of solvent weight of solute isn't it so now if you consider the uh, what we call this uh, vapor pressure of solution determined by so we studied the formula that is the delta p by p1 naught is equal to that is the yes it is mole fraction of solute 
mole fraction of solute. So delta P by P one naught is equal to that is the mole fraction of solute, isn't it? Now, just if you uh, rearrange or rather than rearrange, if you elaborate the formula, delta P in the sense it is a lowering of vapor pressure. What is the difference between the vapor pressure of pure solvent and that of the solution? So instead of delta P, if I write P one naught minus P divided by P one naught is equal to x two. That is correct. Is equal to x two. Isn't it? You are right. मतलब यहाँ मतलब terms दर्ज होगी। लापी one not is given, p you have to calculate, x two you have to find out. So before substituting the values, we have to find out x two. That is the yes mole fraction of solute. So to calculate mole fraction of solute, and in this case solute is our urea. In this case solute is our urea. So mole fraction of solute that is the x two. Can be calculated. How? What is the formula? Mole fraction of solute. So x two is equal to so solute some mole fraction in the sense number of moles of solute divided by total number of moles. So n two divided by n total. N two divided by n total. Isn't it? So it is n two stands for number of moles of solute and n total is the number of moles of all the components present in this hard solution. And all the component in the sense only water and urea both are present. So it is instead of n total. N one plus N two. If you write instead of N total or N one plus N two, it is also correct. N one plus N two, it is also correct. So again, again, again here, if you observe, the number of moles are not also given. So again, we have to calculate N one N two first. So to calculate number of moles, so we just calculate here number of moles. Number of moles first we have to calculate N one. So N one here from here onwards. Remember well, the whenever we use the subscript one. For m, for w, for n, it always represents the solvent. And whenever you use the subscript, we use the two. It always represents for solute. So the n one it is stands for solvent, number of moles of solvent. And solvent in this case is water. Solvent in this case is water. So just write the formula that is the w n one is equal to w one by capital m one. W one by capital M one, so W one is the weight of solvent, and W M one molar mass of solvent, molar mass of solvent. So just substitute here. W one is given, fifty gram, isn't it? Fifty gram. That is the fifty gram divided by what is the molar mass of solvent here? Water, and as solvent is water, as solvent is water, so atomic masses of oxygen is sixteen, and hydrogen is one. So two hydrogen, so sixteen plus two, it becomes eighteen. So it is eighteen gram per mole. Sorry, not it is just moles. So it is a molar mass, eighteen gram per mole. Eighteen gram per mole, isn't it? So if you solve this, if you solve this, then before solving this gram and gram unit cancels, and if you solve this, fifty divided by eighteen, this fifteen divided by eighteen comes out to be two point triple seven. Two point triple seven and mole in the sense unit is mole. So value of number of moles of solvent is two point seven seven triple seven moles. So it is M one. Similarly, if you calculate N two, if you calculate N two, what is the formula? Again same W two divided by M two. What is the W two? Weight of solute. There is urea. Two point eight. Isn't it? It is two point eight. Is correct. Two point eight. Two point eight divided by what is M two? M two is the urea molar mass of urea. What is the formula? You need uh, in, in in this solving these examples, you have to need the uh, some common uh, uh, formulas and their names. You have to study by heart. Now you have to study by heart like glucose, urea, cane sugar, acetic acid, acetone, isn't it? Like such formula uh, names of chemical compounds and their names and their Atomic masses of the particular elements like the hydrogen, atomic mass, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, isn't it? They are commonly, frequently used. You have to know the atomic masses. So in the sense, urea has atomic uh, formula that is the NH two C double bond O NH two, isn't it? So it is the formula of urea. So nitrogen, 
nitrogen atomic mass is yes 14 hydrogen atomic mass is 1 carbon atomic mass is 12 and oxygen atomic mass is 16 so just multiply the number of atoms so in sense nitrogen is 2 so 14 multiplied by 2 hydrogen is 4 14 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 4 carbon only 1 so 12 multiplied by 1 oxygen only 1 so 16 multiplied by 16 and if you calculate and add all these things you will get the answer 16 so it is a 16 uh, 60 is the atom uh, what do you call molar mass of urea molar mass of urea so right here 60 gram per mole and again this gram and this gram cancels and if you solve this 2.8 divided by 60 2.8 divided by 60 you may solve by using the log logarithms values 2.8 divided by 16 i will solve here it is answer is uh, 2.8 divided by 16 this point not 4 double 6 mole 0.08, mole. So these are the number of moles of solvent that is N1 and N2. Now we are going to substitute the N1 and N2 in this equation and to calculate X2. To calculate X2. So X2 is the X2 is the number of moles of N2. 0.0, 0 0.0466 divided by divided by. Instead of substituting N1 plus N2, you may calculate separately N1 plus N2 and directly substitute N total. Or rather, you add, substitute separately N1 that is 2.777 plus 0.0466 N1 and N2. And if you solve this, if you solve this 0.0466 divided by 2.777 plus 0.0466, if you solve this, the answer will come out to be that is the uh, mole fraction uh, is, uh, I think it is. Yes, 0 0.01650, 0 0.01650, it is the x2, it is the x2, 0 0.01650, it is the x2 value, isn't it? So x2, that is the mole fraction, so it will be determined and it is 0 0.01650, then substitute this mole fraction x2 in this equation, in this equation. And again, before substituting this equation, just rearrange the equation as P10 divided by P10, just divide both the terms, minus P divided by P10 is equal to X2. So this P10, P10, 1 minus P divided by P10 is equal to X2. So P divided by P10 is equal to 1 minus X2 isn't it 1 minus x2 so 1 minus x2 in the sense point not 1 6 5 0 and here let me just write here uh, p in the sense calculate p divided by p1 not 17 17 lm 1 minus and x2 point not 1 6 5 double 0 so on rearranging just calculate p if you calculate P, then if you calculate P, it is uh, it just P divided by P divided by 17, first substitute. And if you solve this 1, one minus 0 0.0650, uh, it comes out to be 0 0.9835. 0 0.9835. And then calculate P, and that P is equal to just multiply 17 multiplied by 0 0.9835. And it comes out to be it comes out to be 16.71 mm hg it is the p it is the p it is the vapor pressure of solution vapor pressure of solution so what they ask to calculate what is the vapor pressure of solution so finally you write the uh, in this way the vapor pressure of solution is 16.71 mm of hg square bracket whole sentence square bracket that whole sentence so it is our final uh, answer of the question so in this way before solving uh, just try to solve the examples isn't it uh, before solving, first you have to find out given data. 
once you point out the given data then it is easy point easy but before going to try or solve the examples first you have to be re perfect regarding the theory regarding the theory means uh, on which concept the example is blessed what are the formulas regarding that concept what are the terms regarding that concept isn't it so in this way uh, just solve step by step and try to solve more examples based on this okay so uh, so uh, in next video we see the uh, today's we see the uh, next uh, example that is on the uh, freezing point this is the second question isn't it now see the a 5 percent aqueous solution by mass of cane sugar molar mass 342 gram per mole isn't it has freezing point of 271 kelvin freezing point 271 kelvin calculate the freezing point of 5 percent aqueous glucose solution calculate aqueous glucose solutions so again as i told already it is the first point out given data first point out given data given one by one isn't it first a five percent aqueous solution by mass so you 11 standard you studied the percent by mass percent by volume isn't it definitions so what is the percent by mass isn't it five percent five percent aqueous solution this is total volume total mass of that solution is 100 because percentage out of that 100 five parts are of solute five part is of the solute isn't it so uh, 5 percent aqueous solution means 5 part is of solute in weight it is 5 gram is it just if you consider then because molar mass is given in gram that's why uh, w2 because 5 percent sol aqueous solution by mass in the sense 5 percent whatever we are going to dissolve is a solute is a solute and aqueous stands in the sense solvent is water solvent is water so w2 w2 it is the weight of Yes, solute and it is 5 gram. It is 5 gram. So, as 5 percent aqueous solution, just I told already, total mass of solution is 100 parts. Out of that 100, 5 part is of solute. So, what, are, what is the remaining part of that solvent? Yes, 100 minus 90, 100 minus 5, 100 minus 5. So, just weight of solvent you have to calculate total mass of solution is in percentage in the sense 100. Total mass of solution is 100. Out of that 100, 5 parts is of solute. 5 parts J. Okay, 5 parts kuna chai? Solute chai. And there 5 parts are 100 because solute chai still. The solvent chai parts 100 modun 5 minus karna. So 100 minus 100 minus 5 it becomes 95. So 95 is the parts of solvent. 95 part of solvent. So W1 95 gram. 95 grams. So both in this sentence we covered that is W1 and W2 also. One more value is given that is the uh, mass uh, cane sugar. Which solute? It is cane sugar. And this is the molar mass 340. They are already given here. Molar mass is already given. If you uh, if they are not given molar mass, then you have to remember here uh, you have to know the formula, correct formula of cane sugar. That is C12 H22 O11. C12 H22 O11. Then Capital M. So this is the molar mass of solute. This is M2. M2. 342 gram per mole. Isn't it? 342 gram per mole. Has freezing point of 271 Kelvin. So whether this 271 Kelvin is the freezing point of solution or solvent. Yes. Starting point is 5% aqueous solution by mass of cane sugar has freezing point. In the sense solution word is comes here. That's why. This 271 is the freezing point of solution. So as it is freezing point of solution, just I write TF. TF 271 Kelvin. 271 Kelvin. And they asked to further calculate. Calculate the freezing point of 5% glucose solution. Glucose solution, again same uh, pattern is that. See, 5% aqueous glucose solution. So 5% aqueous glucose solution in the sense, yes, 5 out of the 100 parts of the solution, 5 part is of glucose. And remaining part is of water. There is a solvent. So again here make that is the W uh, two. It is five gram and W one again ninety five gram, isn't it? So just if you observe the same wordings are there W two W two W one W one. So in such cases, just for the sake of convenience separation, I write here 
it is the W2 instead of W1, W1 here, uh, no problem, this solvent W2 cane sugar, so C sugar, cane sugar and here I write it is a glucose, glucose W1, it is a solvent, no problem, W1 is the solvent, isn't it, M2 molar mass of, yes, uh, what is the uh, sol uh, Solar solute M2 is a molar mass of solute. Okay, calculate the freezing point of 5% glucose solution. Isn't it? Okay. So just if you observe carefully, just you observe carefully, what you have to calculate freezing point of 5% glucose solution. So directly freezing point is not uh, there is no formula, isn't it? Depression of freezing points of formula that is delta T F. And if you just write the formula, that is a delta T F is equal to K F into M. Delta T F is equal to K F into M. So, once you know the delta T F, it is easy to calculate freezing point of 5% glucose solution. K F, yes, we are not given K F, isn't it? M, directly molecular is also not given, isn't it? So, for that purpose, if just separate the given data in two compartment or two parts, just separate like this. So, this is the first part and this is the second part. First part and second part if you observe carefully if you observe carefully the values of the first part means from the values of first part one can calculate the cryoscopic constant that is the molar depression in freezing point constant yes just observe carefully weight of solute is given weight of solvent is there molar mass of solute is there and freezing point of solution is there so just uh, if I write the formula as delta T F is equal to K F into M, just elaborate this instead of delta T F, whether it is T F minus T F zero or T F zero minus T F, yes, freezing point. So freezing point, if you decrease the temperature, solvent first freezes and then solution. So solvent has more freezing point uh, rather than in uh, values with considering the values. And for the solution, you have to still decrease the temperature. So it is T zero F, isn't it? Minus T F, isn't it? T F T zero F minus T F is equal to K F into. It's just elaborate the uh, modality. So modality in the sense W two divided by M two into W one. But this W one must be in kilogram. Remember well from here onwards, whenever you are going to substitute the formulas of small m, the weight of solvent always in kilogram. Weight of solvent is always in kilogram. That is the definition of molarity. Number of moles of solute present in 1 kg of solvent. Number of moles of solute present in 1 kg of solvent. So just remember it is a part of that formula. Whenever you write W2, W2 by M2 into W1, just don't leave that W1 as such. In, in bracket you would write kg. You would write kg. So it is... Uh, make practice to write the uh, formula in like this with unit for modality. Okay, so by knowing these terms, just two terms, the T not F is the freezing point of pure solvent. Okay, T F freezing point of solution. No problem. Freezing point of solution is given here. First part. K F you have to calculate. W two weight of cane sugar given. M two uh, molar mass of cane sugar given. Weight of solvent given. So, what about T not F? What about T not F? It is the freezing point of aqueous. C aqueous in the sense it is the water. What is the freezing point of water at normal temperature pressure condition? It is zero degree Celsius, and all the terms are given temperature in Kelvin. So zero degree Celsius in the sense Kelvin scale two seventy three. Zero degree Celsius in the Kelvin scale two seventy three. So T not F is two seventy three minus T F. 271 is equal to KF into KF into W2 5 gram 5 gram divided by so okay M2 342 342 into W1 95 W1 95 it is converted to kilogram so it is multiplied by here into 10 raise to minus 3 if you transfer 10 raise to minus 3 in upward it becomes 10 raise to plus 3 in the sense 30 in the sense 30 so 5000 divided by 342 into 95 into 95 
So if you solve this, it becomes 2 is equal to Kf, isn't it? Into 5000 divided by, and if you solve 342 into 95, I will solve here, 342 into 95, it is 32490, 32490, isn't it? 32490, and again, 2 is equal to Kf into 5000 divided by 32490, it comes out to be 0.1538. One one five three eight and just write KF is equal to KF is equal to two divided by point one five three eight. This KF value comes out to be that is a thirteen point zero zero. Thirteen point zero zero KF. What is unit of KF? Kelvin kilogram per mole. Yes, Kelvin kilogram per mole. This is already studied in the depression of freezing point. It is called molar. Depression in freezing point or cryoscopic constant, isn't it? So, 13.00 Kelvin kilogram per mole. So, by using first data, we calculate, determine Kf. Substitute the value of Kf in second. Why? Well, is there the difference for the first and for the second? Kf value are not different. Why? Because Kf is the characteristic property of that solvent. Kf is the characteristic property of solvent. And in both the cases, solvent is the same. Aqueous, aqueous. In both the cases, solvent is the same. And as solvent is the same, in the sense, KFL is also the same. So just substitute the KF in second to calculate delta TL. So just here, I separate. It is the first part of the problem. So by using second section, second uh, given data, we uh, proceed here. Uh, that is the same formula. That is the delta TF is equal to KF into M. Isn't it? KF into M. So just... So to calculate first delta Tf. So delta Tf is equal to Kf into m in the sense again same pattern. That is the W2 divided by M2 into W1 in kilogram. In kilogram. So delta Tf is equal to Kf. We calculate first 30. 13.0 into weight of here this W2 is the Glucose, remember that this weight is the glucose. Glucose and this W2 is the yes, it is cane sugar. It is cane sugar. Now, actually, weight for both the cases are same again. 5 gram, no problem. So, 5 gram divided by M2. What is the molar mass of glucose? Yes, glucose of molar mass because they are not given molar mass of glucose. You have to know the formulas C6H12O6. C6H12O6 and if you calculate the molar mass of glucose, it comes out to be 180. Yes, it comes out to be 180. C6H12O6. If you calculate carbon, 12 into 6. Hydrogen, 12 into 1. Oxygen, yes. Oxygen, I change these numbers here. 1. 1 into 12. 1 into 12. Isn't it? Numbers first. 6 into 16. So if you calculate all these things and addition added, you get answer 180. Isn't it? 180. So 180 into weight of solvent again same 95. And 10 to minus 3 and upward it becomes uh, 10 to plus 3. So 5000. 5000. Okay. So delta Tf is equal to delta Tf is equal to. So if you solve this, if you solve this, it comes out to be. Uh, just uh, 5000 13 multiplied by 13 multiplied by 5000 divided by 180 into 95 and if you solve this it comes out to be 65 65000 divided by it comes out to be 17100 17100 isn't it 17100 and again further on simplification delta tf 3.801 3.801 this is delta tf but it is the final answer not they ask to calculate freezing point of aqueous glucose solution so just we whatever calculate it is a depression freezing point it is depression in freezing point what is a depression freezing point means when when you add a 5% glucose in that water then by adding 5% of glucose or 5 gram of water in that solution, 
freezing point decreases difference is 3.801 how much decrease by, by 3.801 kelvin kelvin this much amount decreases so if you further delta tf is equal to just by the same formula here elaborate delta tf t not f minus tf t not f minus t f and they asked to calculate here in this case tf that is the freezing point of glucose so just tf is equal to yes tf is equal to yes t not f t not f is the freezing point of solvent and solvent is water so t not f is the freezing point of solvent in the sense 0 degree celsius in kelvin it is 273 so 273 minus 3.801 3.801 if you solve this it comes out to be the final answer it is the 269.19 269.19 kelvin it is tf it is tf isn't it and our final answer in the sentence that is the what they asked the freezing point of therefore the freezing point of 5 percent aqueous aqueous glucose solution is how much it is 269.19 kelvin and this square bracket this square bracket that is the final answer of the question so just first try to point out first given data whatever ask just write first formula and then check the given data and the whatever we required to solve that particular formula and just uh, simpl by simplifying just uh, try to solve step by step okay okay so in next lecture we see the uh, next type of examples okay good day